Hello everyone. So next section, we're going to look over um, how to uh, compute uh, domains of a function with algebraic representation. So in other words, most of the function we're going to study are going to be given by an equation. And the first thing you're going to do if you want to study that function represented algebraically is to first compute where it's defined. And in this class, there's really three types of uh, potential problem with uh, a function that is represented algebraically with a formula. The first thing is, if you have a, a function that is given by a fraction, you don't want any denominator equal to zero, so you want no division by zero. So if you have an expression somewhere in your formula of the form one over some shit, so let's say one over a here, then that a cannot be equal to zero. And one way to explain this fairly easily is with the graph of one over x here. If you have the function one over x, you can divide by x as long as x is not zero. So here, if x is equal to zero, you're in that zone that is the dead zone. So you cannot divide by zero. So when you see an expression, if you see a denominator, you don't want any values of x that will make this denominator equal to zero. So the next thing is if you have a square root somewhere or an even root in general, so a square root, a fourth root or a sixth root and etc. For, for us, most of the time, it's just going to be a square root. Uh, you don't want to have like strictly negative numbers in that square root. So if you have an expression of the form square root of some things, so this is square root of a, then that a needs to be bigger or equal than zero. Zero is fine. Square root of zero is zero. Square root of a strictly positive number is fine, but something, if something inside is strictly negative, it's not good. And again, here with the graph next to it, uh, if you have like the square root of x graph, so square root of zero is fine, square root of anything else after is fine, but the dead zone is before zero. So something strictly negative will make this function crash. It's not defined before a zero. And the last thing to check, if you have the a logarithmic term, inside your expression, you don't want to have like the logarithmic of something that is zero or strictly negative. So if you have an expression of the form ln of a, you want that a to be strictly positive. So you cannot have ln of zero. And again here, just to help out, I drew the function ln of x for you. And um, so you cannot have ln of zero. Zero, x equals zero is actually a vertical asymptote and you cannot feed it anything strictly negative, it will crash for sure. And just an important remark that I'll be using later uh, for ln of x, so that's the graph in blue here. And just the only point that we truly need, truly need to remember is that if you compute ln of one, you get zero. And this will be a trick that you will need to remember, or a fact, sorry, that you will need to remember for some of those questions. So let's do some examples. So let's compute the domain of some function. So the first one, um, f of x is equal to one over x minus one. So we see here the only potential problem is the division by zero here. So we have x minus one at the denominator of that expression. So we have a division by zero. So here, if a is equal to x minus one, we want x minus one to not be equal to zero. So we want x to not be equal to one. So the only value that will make this function crash is x equal one. So one is not part of the domain. So therefore, the domain of this function, the domain of this function, when you say the domain of this function, it also sounds dysfunctional. <laughs> I'm so alone. Anyways, the domain of this function is everything but one. So that's one way to write it. So of course, if you're in web work or if you have an assignment, you will have to write everything but one. So all the numbers from minus infinity to one, like brackets open with open here, union one to infinity. That's with bracket notation. Both would be accepted on a written exam. But in web work, typically you want the bracket notation. And that's your answer. Okay, this is how you write that the domain of this function is uh, everything but one. 
All right, next example. So we have uh, f of x is equal to the root of x plus 2 over x minus 1. And as you can see, I'm a bit lazy here. I'm using a function with the same <laughs> denominator. <coughs> Whoa, I have to stop smoking. So here, x minus 1, we just freshly did that one. So we know that this is a division by 0 type problem. Uh, you don't want something that is divided by 0, and we just together verified that this means that x cannot be equal to 1. Okay, so same computation as earlier for part A. What's new now is the square root. So we have the square root of x plus 2. So we have the root of A, the root of something. Okay, type problem. So this is a root of A problem. So where A is x plus 2, so you want x plus 2 to be bigger or equal than zero, so x needs to be bigger or equal than minus two. So we have two conditions here to take into account. Uh, we want x to be greater or equal than minus two, but you, we don't want this uh, x to be equal to one. And I find me personally, when I have more than one condition, it's easier to draw these two conditions together. So here, if I, boom, okay, draw this, the, the real line and already label here minus two and one, which are important numbers. If I look at the inequality, big or equal to minus two, uh, so if you start at minus two, so I'm going to draw a fat dot because the inequality is inclusive, it includes minus two, but then I need to go after minus 2. So if I just draw greater or equal to minus 2, this is what I would get. But now what I need to do is I need to remove the 1. So here what I'm going to do to remove the 1 is draw a white dot. So here we have this white dot. I'm removing 1. So this creates two different intervals. The first one is from minus 2 to 1. Um, so the minus 2 here is... Uh, included, but the one is excluded, and then after one, so from one excluded to infinity, always open. And now, when you're when you're um, writing this using interval notation, so you just need to put a union in between. So if you look at the final answer, so the final answer, the domain of f. So here we go. Poof. The domain of f is uh, minus two to one union one to infinity. All right, next example. So here we have f of x is equal to ln of three minus x. So of course, this third example is to look over to that third restriction. We have ln of some stuff. So here what we're going to do is when we have ln of a, so this is a ln of a problem. Okay, so ln of a, where a is 3 minus x, so you want the 3 minus x to be strictly bigger than 0. So if I bring x on the right side as a plus x, you want x to be smaller than 3. So x needs to be smaller than 3. That's my only condition here. Uh, so this will correspond to, so when I have only one, I can just do it. So this corresponds to the interval from minus infinity to the three, so I can just write the domain right away. So here we go, boom, okay, so the domain is from minus three to infinity. So only one restriction, ln of something, that something needs to be strictly bigger than zero. In this case, while isolating x, we got that x was smaller than three, so that created the open interval from minus infinity to three. All right, last example in that, in that section. We have f of x is 1 over x uh, ln of 3 minus x. So, of course, the first problem here is the, the same as the previous one. So, we have 3 minus x inside of a ln. So, what's happening here is we have that ln of a again problem. And this one we just did, so I'm not going to redo it. But we know that x needs to be smaller, strictly smaller than uh, than 3. So as previously computed, but we have a fat denominator here. So this is going to be the interesting part. So we have the x here. So we have two terms multiplying each other at the denominator. We have x and we have ln of, of um, 3 minus x. Of course, for the first one, so for the first term, so maybe I'll write this a bit bigger. So for the first term, so if I call this one, uh, x here cannot, so this, these are 
two condition of the form division by zero. So X cannot be zero. If you put zero in there, boom, it dies. Okay, so the second one is a bit more subtle. Um, and for that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, to, um, just put a recall there. So here we go. Boom. Okay. So recall, if you have ln of some expression B equal to zero, that B, okay, um, is equal to one. So basically here, what we have is we have ln of three minus X, and we don't want that to be equal to zero. And using the recall, this means that three minus X cannot be equal cannot be equal to one. And if you isolate X here, you get three minus one. I bring the one on the left side and I bring the minus X on the right side. So here X cannot be equal to two. So X cannot be equal to two. So we have a, a bunch of condition. Okay, so X needs to be strictly less than three, cannot be zero, and it cannot be two. Again, here, a lot of condition. I find the best way to get that um, information, um, to put that information together uh, is to draw a real line. So by the way, the second condition, I find it so special. I'm going to put a star, Ooh, it's a pity star. It's gonna pity star just to show you that, remember that, that thing, this will happen for sure. Okay, hello. So anyway, so now if we want to, draw the domain using all condition here. So here we go, poof. Okay, we have a real line. I've already put all the precious numbers that I need here, zero, two, and three. So let's start with the inequality, um, the less than. So here we want something less than three. So I start at three and that tree needs to be open. So I'm going to draw a white dot. Okay, so it's not including that tree because this inequality is strict. And then I'm going to draw uh, just to, I'm just going to color the numbers before tree. So I'm drawing something before tree. So here we go. That's before tree. And then I want to remove zero. So if I draw a dot, a white dot for zero. So here we go, white dot removing zero. And I also need to remove two. So I'm going to draw a white dot for two. So this creates three intervals before zero. So from minus infinity to zero, between zero and two. So from zero, so zero to two, the interval zero to two, and then from between two and three. So if you're just going to write that together, so here we go, boom. Okay, the domain from minus infinity to zero, union zero to two, union two to three, and that's the domain for that function. And this is the level I would expect you to be able to work with, okay, uh, on the test. Anyways, so just a quick, 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 quick recall. So for that section, we're looking at algebraic function that are defined algebraically, so with equations. So when you're computing a domain, look for denominators, look for x values that will make that denominator equal to zero and then remove them. Look for square roots or in general for even roots and make sure that inside these square roots, everything is greater or equal than zero and look for logarithmic terms and make sure that inside these logarithmic terms, everything is strictly positive. And then just combine all of those uh, inequalities together. The best way is to draw the real line, do whatever you want, as long as you do it correctly. Anyways, for that section, that's it, that's all. Bye-bye.